Uh, to begin with, uh, my story started uh, exactly a year ago uh, when my fiancé, he introduced me to Islam. Uh, but it was not all of a sudden, you know, uh, we were usually having some discussions on uh, religions and, you know, stuff. And uh, so how we were, uh, yes, I was uh, previously from a very sophisticated Orthodox religion. Uh, which had a lot of, you know, uh, restrictions to come up and say. Uh, so, uh, during most of our uh, discussions, we were having a lot of healthy discussions over this uh, same topic, over and over. And uh, so, at some point, uh, I felt like, yes, he makes sense, you know, he has some uh, logical reasoning behind what he says. So, uh, that was the point where I started thinking about it and uh, Yes, that's how the slow transitions actually happened. Uh, then I started reading about it. So whatever I felt about Islam, uh, and I was thinking before, you know, when I was outside this religion, um, it was totally different. So when I know more about Islam, I had a lot of insights about how the things, you know, have been changed or how the things are uh, real and actual uh, in Islam. Uh, in terms of tolerance and peace. So uh, I, when I learned more about it, it was pretty interesting. And uh, then actually that's the time that I started taking religion seriously. So I felt it was a wonderful journey and still I'm learning and learning a lot. Uh, Allah is guiding. Even though I was learning all this for the past one year, I just recently took Shahada, just uh, last month. In a personal perspective, if I say, um, you know, especially when taking decisions or um, taking the life as such, you know, when especially when we face challenges. Uh, obviously, like everyone else, I was also so panicked when you have any challenges or struggles, you know, all of a sudden. Um, but now also I'm not saying there is no struggle. Yes, there are problems, but still the way how I face it is a bit different now. For example, uh, I became more stable. Okay, I have a, a kind of stability that, you know, whatever comes, okay, uh, there is a savior, there is someone to secure you, safeguard you. So whatever comes in your way, uh, Allah wants you to face it. Okay, so uh, I think that gives me more strength to face it in a different way. So I think I felt that this is the biggest change that uh, had in me uh, as a person. Uh, my fiancé, he helped me a lot, uh, you know, uh, he taught each and everything uh, related to Islam and uh, Quran and, uh, you know, um, Zura, whatever comes in uh, the way that uh, a lot of stories which is happening and uh, what uh, Prophet Muhammad said and this is how the life should be. Concepts about Allah and uh, halal, haram things and uh, uh, also uh, concept of heaven and hell and all that. Uh, but still, I was also thinking that we, I need to learn it a bit more, you know, like a structured way, uh, properly what it says. And then actually I met, uh, I, I contacted Discover Islam, so uh, they helped help, help me a lot uh, through their uh, lectures and, you know, whenever I have, a, you know, some clarifications regarding anything related to Islam, obviously we can uh, call up them any point of time and uh, they, are, they are ready to help us. And apart from that, I also watch some videos of like, uh, you know, Stada Yasmin Mugahed. I really like her so much. Her words are so inspirational. Uh, 
uh, and also Mufti Mek. There are some, uh, you know, uh, motivational uh, Islamic preachers that I follow. Honestly speaking, uh, it was not very welcoming as I mentioned before, uh, uh, you know, when it comes to family and especially when I was from a very, uh, you know, orthodox kind of religion, uh, it, it is a bit difficult, you know, it's, it's uh, obviously it's religion which is deep rooted inside them, uh, you know, running in their uh, blood for so long. So it will take some time for them to digest and all that, but hopefully uh, they understand. <laughs> It's, it's basically, you know, what I personally felt is Islam is kind of a religion which strongly have very strong base uh, of hope and faith. Okay, this is the two important concept that I want to put in front of people that, uh, uh, yeah, yes, we will have problems in our life, you know, it, it's, it's life anyhow. Uh, but to face these problems with a great hope and faith, this is something different. So, end of the day, this hope will, uh, you know, uh, help us to... Uh, guide towards something better so as a person we evolve you know we we transit to a better version of ourselves so i think islam is the best religion for that We will talk about the first letter of the Gora, G, stands for God's existence, that there is a creator to the heavens and earth. Allah says in the Quran, أَمْ خُلِقُوا مِنْ غَيْرِ شَيْءٍ أَمْ هُمُ الْخَالِقُونَ أَمْ خَلَقُوا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ بَلْ لَا يُقِنُونَ Or were they created by nothing? Or are they their own creators? Or did they create the heavens and earth? In fact, they have no firm belief in Allah. So now, if we want to give an example of things that we are interacting with, and it will be interesting for the person receiving the da'wah, for example, now this phone is helping me read out some of my points. If we see this phone, and I say, I was walking in the desert of Arabia. The desert of Arabia has petroleum, which is important for the plastic, it has a lot of minerals and gold for the electronic circuits and it has silicon which is this uh, sand uh, to make the glass would if i tell you that i was walking in the desert and i found this phone and it has my slides on the on it and it's an action of random events of the striking of the thunder sun and rain and everything would you believe me you would think that I'm out of my mind. So how about this whole earth that we live in, the skies, the moon, the things that we see, the plants, all of that, who created it? Did it create itself? Or was it created from nothing? Or was there a creator to that, which is the argument in Islam that there is a creator to the heavens and earth? 